the United States of America is the richest country in the history of the world, and that is not an exaggeration, that is the fact, those are the facts. Um, we have all these gigantic multi-billion dollar international, uh, multinational corporations that are based here in the United States, like Apple and Exxon and um, any of these, uh, like the defense contractors, or these weapon manufacturers, um, all these different, you have Verizon and, and, and Comcast and all these AT&T, all these gigantic multi-billion dollar corporations we have here in the United States. Um, Ox, it was, yes, Oxford, who does a study every year on um, wealth inequality in the world. Uh, last year, in the, their study, they came to the conclusion that um, the eight richest people on the planet have as much wealth as the bottom 50% of the planet uh, combined. So eight people have more wealth than um, the bottom 50%. So how much would that be now? Like 3.6? Yeah, about 3.6 billion people combined. So that in and of itself is absurd. Um, five of those eight richest people live in the United States. So that should give you some sort of idea. The national budget, uh, the federal budget uh, for the government is what about three trillion dollars a year? So that should give you some sort of idea of how much money is amassed here in the United States. And Instead of using that money for something productive, uh, let me show you what we do actually spend all that money on. So, uh, here we have a story from CNBC. The title is, uh, the $717 billion defense bill made its way to Trump's desk. Uh, so, let me just get into this article for you. President Donald Trump is expected to approve the, co the colossal defense policy bill that authorizes a top-line budget of $717 billion. The 2019 National Defense Authorization Act includes a $616.9 billion for the, the Pentagon's base budget, another $69 billion for the Overseas Contingency Operations, or OCO, funding, and $21.9 billion for nuclear weapons program, we yeah, for, for nuclear weapons programs under the Energy Department. The defense friendly bill, named in honor of John McCain, who is battling brain cancer, authorizes a 2.6% pay raise for troops, the largest in nearly a decade. The, the measure also delays the delivery of stealth fighters, of stealth fighter aircraft to Turkey and blunts Chinese investment by strengthening the, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. And while the actual funding for the policy bill has yet to materialize from Congress, here's a breakdown of some of the big ticket items on the Pentagon is authorized to buy. The NDAA allows $7.6 billion for 77 Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighters the fifth generation stealth jet is made at a Lockheed facility in Fort Worth, Texas and remains the Pentagon's most expensive weapon system. The defense policy bill also bars the delivery of, a, of F-35 jets to fellow NATO member Turkey amid, con amid concerns over Ankara's desire to buy a Russian missile defense system. Turkey, an F-35 program partner, is currently slated to receive two of the jets, the first the first of what Ankara hopes will be the start of a 100 strong fleet. Good God damn. The legislation authorizes $85 million for UH-60M Blackhawk utility helicopter. The, chopper are, the choppers are made by Sikarsky, a unit of Lockheed Martin, of course, a facility at Stratford, Connecticut. In March, Trump described Sikarsky's Black Hawk helicopters as, quote, fi fighting machines and the, quote, most advanced helicopters in the world. Congress also agreed to fully fund the U.S. Air Force 
Air Force's new long-range stealth B B-21 bomber. America's next heavy bomber is named Raider and made by Northrop Grumman. Congress approved $1.56 billion for three littoral combat yeah, littoral combat ships, even though the Navy only requested one. Of course, why don't you just give them some extra ones? Why not? The bill also authorizes the fourth Ford class air the fourth Ford class air aircraft carrier, six icebreakers, and a Columbia class ballistic missile submarine. Who the fuck is using all of this? In all, a total 13 new Navy warships were approved for the coming fiscal year. Because, obviously, we're at war with a fucking uh, Aquaman and his fleet of, of uh, armored fucking whales or something. The NDAA authorizes $225 million for a Striker A-1 combat vehicle for Striker A-1 combat vehicles and support efforts to modernize the Army's armored combat vehicles, which includes 135 M1 Abram tanks, 60 Bradley fighter vehicles, and 197 armored multipurpose vehicles, 38 improved recovery vehicles, and 3,390 joint light tactical vehicles. The legislation also adds $140 million to the Missile Defense Agency for development of critical directed energy and space sensing projects as well as hypersonic defense capabilities. The Army, the Army's efforts to in integrate its Patriot and Terminal High Altitude Area Defense or THAAD missile defense system also gets a 200, also gets $284 million. Good God. So, th this is, this defense bill is a a gigantic, colossal waste of money. Uh, let me get into to some of the um, points that I mentioned in the article. $69 billion for, quote, overseas contingency operations. Now, this is known as the war chest. And what we use that money for is all of our illegal and covert military operations that we have going on around the world. Uh, now, the $7.6 billion for 77 Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighters. This, this program is completely absurd. Um, one of my favorite commentators, uh, Kyle Kalinske, a uh, host of Secular Talk, he makes the point whenever he talks about uh, these new F-35s and these new fighter jets that, well, he makes several points. One, that, uh, yeah, because the, the, the previous generation of, of fighter jets, they just were completely obsolete and got to throw them in the trash because, obviously, we need the newest shit. We need some brand new fighter jets to drop bombs in countries that didn't attack us. And we... And, the, and just the, the, the amount of money that we've wasted on this program is absurd. So I think overall, the, the, the total money that the Pentagon has spent funding this one program of fighter jets is over $2 trillion. And the first time they made it, the planes didn't even fucking fly. So it is a gigantic money pit that we're just throwing... A, a, uh, just blank checks for this F-35 fighter program and for what reason I don't know we already have fighter jets and heli attack helicopters and drones and all these other we dominate airspace so we don't need a brand new uh, generation of fighter jets much less one that costs two trillion dollars to make and goddamn two trillion dollars I already I, me I mentioned before that the, the national budget the entire federal budget for literally every program that the government runs annually is around $3 trillion, maybe $4 trillion. So in the couple of years that they've been funding this, this new F-35 program, they've already spent upwards of $2 trillion on it. That is so fucking insane. Um, and the reason why this is happening, it's no other reason. L no other reason. I don't want it. I'm not going to entertain any other excuse for it. This is all because of legalized bribery and the military industrial complex. So I'm not going to get too, too into it, but a brief explanation of what the military industrial complex is. And when you bring it up, 
it sounds conspiratorial and it sounds like some Alex Jones uh, shit like, oh, the military industrial complex, they're putting uh, some chemicals in the, in the water and they're turning all the frogs gay or some, and uh, 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 the female helicopters, they're gonna put you in the black helicopters, they're gonna put you in the concentration camps and you're never gonna see your family again. Like, it sounds like some insane, absurd Alex Jones conspiracy shit, but this has been a, 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 basically a staple in American politics for decades now. And the way it works is, it's basically, there are a small group of people who make a shit ton of money whenever there is war. Um, these groups include the defense contractors, so people who make the equipment to go to war, like the tanks, the people who make the, the guns, the people who make the missiles, the people who make the bombs and the jets and in the armor and all of that shit, um, those are, those corporations are classified as defense contractors. And in the United States, some of the major ones are like Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, um, just to name a few. And they all specialize in their own area of war and bombing shit. Uh, but they, they're part of the military industrial complex. So the, the one side of it is the corporations, who, the private corporations who make billions and billions of dollars off of war. And then the other side of it is the politicians who sanction the wars and give them the contracts to make these weapons. Because a lot of these corporations could not exist if the government wasn't giving them contracts to make tanks or make guns or to make bombs or make missiles or, or aircraft or whatever it is that they're making or submarines. They would not exist if the government was not giving them contracts to make these, these billion dollar and million dollar contracts to make these weapons. I don't want to hear shit when it comes to programs to actually help people because in essence that's what the government is there for. To help people, to help the, the, uh, um, the most vulnerable in society, to help the, the, the hungry and to help the poor and to help the kids and to help the elderly and to help the sick. That is what the government is there for. So I don't want to hear shit about we, we can't afford these programs that are supposed to help people when that is the main function of the government. When instead we have hundreds, you know, we have trillions of dollars to give to the Pentagon to build weapons and to fund wars that do nothing but kill people and fund genocide. So, now, where are all the fiscal conservatives? Because they're the ones, they're the ones leading the charge anytime the Democrats or liberals or progressives um, bring up programs to help people, to help, like social programs like food stamps or housing assistance programs or, or um, Medicaid or Medicare. Whenever we, we talk about putting more money into those programs, they're always the ones to block the shit. They're always the ones to vote no on it. They're always the ones to filibuster it. And they're always the ones to, to make it not happen. So, and, and their reasoning for that is, well, they, 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 they claim that they're one... Um, against government uh, uh, spending, period. So they think the government should only fund uh, uh, necessary programs like firefighters and, and, and um, shit like that. So they always have a, an excuse for why we shouldn't be funding these programs like social programs. And they say it's... Um, and they claim to, to have some type of, of um, moral conviction that they don't want to be spending U.S. taxpayer money. Um, you shouldn't be taking money from, a, from one person to give it to another person. They claim to have some type of moral objection against that. But yet, when it comes to giving money to multi-billion dollar corporations or to, to the Pentagon or to fund war and genocide, they're, they're all on board with that. So, again, I don't want to hear a damn thing from fiscal conservatives about um, spending on social programs because you're just you're just fucking lying because you have no problem spending government money you have no problem spending taxpayer money when it's for something that you like when it's for war and for the military and to kill people and for genocide you have no problem with that so I don't want to hear anything when it comes to uh, um, putting more money into social security or putting more money into Medicaid and Medicare or to fund a single payer program or for free college or any number of social programs that would help most average Americans. I don't want to hear you 
your 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 bullshit arguments and your your grandstanding about how you're against government spending because clearly you're not because you all voted for the 717 billion dollar uh, Pentagon budget and you vote for the an absurd Pentagon budget every single year so you contradict yourself every single year it's not just this time or this year or this budget it's literally every time and they're on top of that they're the ones who push for the increase. So not only are they voting yes on it, they're the ones who always want to put more money into it. So again, I don't want to hear shit from you on social programs. Because they blow up the budget with, with, the, with tax cuts for the rich and these, these um, at, for endless wars, blank checks for all of that stuff. And when it comes for, to anything to help people, I, I don't know about that. Let's do some, some research and see how we're going to fund that. Let's, let's, um, we're going to have to raise taxes on people. You want to run on raising taxes for people? So that's always their excuse. So, uh, my last point on this, uh, they're all full of shit. Politicians are full of shit. Anybody who's telling you you can't afford free college or, 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 or any of these other programs that I named, they're just full of shit. And, um, the, the reason why they're, they're, they're against those programs is because it doesn't benefit them. This benefits them. The Pentagon budget benefits them because, like I mentioned, Lockheed Martin's going to give them $25 million for their midterm elections. So they, they're getting something out of that. Um, who, what are they going to get out of feeding homeless people or, or housing homeless people? They're not getting it. Homeless people are, are, aren't uh, uh, giving contributions to the Republican Party or to Paul Ryan's re-election or to Mitch McConnell's re-election or, 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 or any of these other uh, politicians. They're not giving them money, so why are we concerned about them? The only people they're concerned about is their donors, and, and that is the, the larger issue here. And it always comes back to the, to the issue of money and politics. Politicians, they only work for their donors, so if it's pharmaceutical companies, if it's the banks, if it's uh, um, tech companies, if it's the military industrial complex with defense contractors, Anybody who is giving them large sums of money, that's who they're working for. And they're not working for the American people. And which is why we need to get money out of politics. Because if you don't get money out of politics, shit like this is going to keep happening. The military budget is going to keep getting out of control. We're going to keep funding all these ridiculous wars and this genocide. And, 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 and wars like Afghanistan, that the longest one in U.S. history. We've been in there 17 years. No end in sight. So that's why we need to get money out of politics because this shit is just going to keep on happening and keep on getting worse and the country is going to keep falling apart, the infrastructure is going to keep falling apart, um, the wealth uh, disparity between rich and poor is going to keep growing and the only way to address these problems is to get money out of politics. Um, Wolfpack, um, organizations like Our Revolution and Justice Democrats that are, are funding um, these these grassroots politicians to that are running on the issue of money and politics that's the only way to address this if not it's just going to keep getting worse